New Orleans, the city that housing project have been made famous by rap artists. New Orleans, the city where the street rappers actually live their raps. New Orleans, the city where you can get a drink 24-7 around the clock. New Orleans, the city where clubs rock until the wee wee hours of the morning. The city that's famous for its ball seafood, seafood po' boys, and seafood gumbo. The city where being a stepper doesn't mean that you're stepping in the name of love, like R. Kelly. Uptown, downtown, the East, the West Bank, Kenner and Metairie all have steppers and hustlers. Some of the most infamously known projects in the NO would be the Ville, the Fisher, the Yo, the Tama, the Desire, the Melf, the Florida, the Bernard, and the Noya. In no particular order, these jacks aren't to be played with. When it comes to being cutthroat, and calculated, the Noya wears the crown. Some of the OGs that stomped through the Noya were Lester Duplessis, Blackie Moe, Eric Maurice, and Roy Lee. The younger generation will produce one of the realest dudes to ever step foot out of the Noya. This is the story of James Tapp, AKA Magnolia Slim. James Tapp, a.k.a. Soldier Slim, born September 9th, 1977, to Linda Tapp in New Orleans, Louisiana, survived by sister Danielle Porter and his two sons, was one of the realest to ever step foot out of the Noya. Born in uptown New Orleans, going back and forth from the Noya to the parkways, Slim will be no stranger to the street life. In his teen years, up to his early 20s, Slim would fight being on both that boy and that girl, hitting licks, putting off jack moves, and getting into all kinds of street beefs. Slim would solidify himself as a certified gangster. It's the late 80s, early 90s. Bounce music is just starting to pop in the city. Some of the names ringing at the time were T.T. Tucker, Juvenile and Magnolia Slim, whom you know today as Soldier Slim. Slim would be in high school. Like most high schools in the city during this era, at recess, aspiring bounce artists would perform for their classmates. These performances would garner attention from the entire school, become something that the students would look forward to. Bounce music was the only thing popping at the time. And young teens were collectively representing their hoods and getting it how they lived. The NO is the city where kids get life insurance policies at the age of 12. And by the age of 13, they were slinging that iron. Hood fights and one-on-one -on -one fist fights were also a thing. The real threat came from the retaliation to these fights, which would oftentimes be trigger play. One day after performing at recess, James Tapp, aka Magnolia Slim, would get into an argument with Anthony Libus, aka Lil Libus, nephew of Glenn Libus from the Calio Projects. This argument would turn into a fist fight, which would later turn into trigger play, leading to Anthony being hit in the leg. It is alleged that Slim and his homies were responsible. This would initiate the beef between Slim and Lil Livers. During this time, Slim would be back and forth from the Noya to the Parkway, trying to jumpstart his music career. After these homies would send threats to dudes from the Parkway, which would ultimately end up with one of Lil Livers' homies being hit up. Livers would spend the bin looking for Slim. Word on the street was that Lil Livers wanted revenge. One evening, Anthony would finally catch up with Slim and hit him up. As Livers was attempting to stand over Slim and finish the job, Miss Linda would plead with him not to take her son's life. This startled Lil Livers, who would then mash out after the encounter. Slim would survive his injuries. It wouldn't be much longer after that Lil Livers would be crushed. It is alleged that it was a retaliation from Slim. New Orleans, Louisiana. The year was 1995. Cash Money Records had the streets on lock. 
riding off the back of UNLV, highly acclaimed Mac Melf Calio, the streets would be in a chokehold. Percy Miller, a.k.a. Master P's No Limit Records, had just released the Down South Hustlers compilation album that featured the smash hit, You Got It, by Soldier Slim, who at the time went by Magnolia Slim. Riding the wave of this hit in the Dark Side EP that he released with Hype Enough Records, Slim would rock different clubs every week. James Tapp, who was a known for having a whip at the time, would ride with his homies out to know you. Slim's music career was starting to bubble, but he was still in the streets. Fighting his demons using both that boy and that girl. One of the spots that was jumping in the Inno was Club Rumors, located at 2831 St. Claude Avenue in the Ninth Ward. Slim would rock rumors in other clubs in the city every weekend. Fat Melvin and Parkway Greg were two street dudes who were known for getting loaded and running Junkie G. Melvin was from Willow in Anoya and Greg was from South Galvis. You couldn't spot one without the other. Yellow Boy from UNLV shouted out to Fat Melvin and Greg on the Mac Melf Calio album. Although he got loaded, Fat Melvin was known for having silver packs, half a grams, and powder bags which were all right up Slim's alley. Slim was due to perform at Rumors one night when he spotted Fat Melvin and Greg driving down the Ave. Slim needing a ride would flag them down. There was still an hour or two before Slim was due to perform. The two would ride around the city tooting out a quarter of that girl. Slim was known for spooking out and upping that too. Melvin would bird feed Slim to avoid the conflict. This would aggravate Slim, whom at the time, unbeknownst to Greg and Melvin, was packing two nines. 30 minutes later, they would arrive at Club Rumors, dumping three dime bags of that foil before entering, taking what was left of the quarter of soft into the club. Slim would stash the two nines under the seat without them noticing. The three would toot out the bag all night. Slim rocked the house as usual, and it was now time for the club to close. As they were leaving, Slim would ask Fat Melvin, did he have any more yay? Melvin would respond, yes, but all I have left are these bags, and they're going for 10. Not happy with Fat Melvin's response, he and Slim would get into an argument. Aware of what Slim was capable of, Melvin would give him two bags. As the three were about to take the on-ramp to the interstate, Slim would say, nah, stay on the street, bruh. I need to get a pack of Joes. They would stop at the 24-hour Exxon on Legion Fields in Claiborne. Slim would hop out and grab a pack of Camels, non-filtered. Now headed back uptown, Slim would ask again for two more bags of that yay. The two would again begin to argue and Slim would up the two nines, taking everything, the keys, the work, and any money that Fat Belvin and Greg had on them, leaving them both stranded downtown. Slim would head back to the Noya and dump the truck. It wouldn't be until three days later that Greg would find his truck stripped and abandoned on Annunciation by the Thomas. Greg would never report this incident to the NOPD, nor would he or Fat Melvin retaliate. On November 26, 2003, James Tapp, also known as Soldier Slim, was shelled right here in New Orleans. Don't get involved in the foolishness, level. I'm trying to tell you what's happening right now. You know well, you understand. I'm going to do my thing, you understand what I'm saying? And keep it real, you know me. You, know, you got the label popping up, Cutthroat yeah, Committee. Yeah, Cutthroat Committee, yeah, it's official now, you heard me? Crucial in New Orleans, man. You understand what I'm saying? The little past 94 was on the street. Gangster. 
One of Slim's first local rap hits was Snorted Powder Bag, which he would rock clubs and bars with. Slim would do a joke and upon his release, signed with No Limit Records. This relationship wouldn't last long as Slim would feel that Pete was playing with the money. Slim would take it back to the streets and launch his own record label, Cut Throat Committee Records. You understand me? Understand me, man. You got the label popping up, Cut Throat yeah, Committee. Yeah, Cut Throat Committee. Yeah, it's official now. You heard me? Slim would still be in the streets and continue to pull off acts. Slim would rap about these acts in the lyrics of his songs, rapping word for word about an act that he pulled off in his song, If It's Beef, would it literally cause him to lose his life. Slim gave full details about a kidnapping that he and his cutthroat homies had pulled off. A hook would be put out on Slim and he would be taken out in front of his mother's home on November 26, 2003. There was a huge second line for Slim's funeral the entire New Orleans would attend. It wouldn't be long before Slim being crushed would be retaliated against. Jarrell Jigga Smith would be initially arrested for the crime, but would later be released. That same year, Jigga would be arrested again for deleting Spencer Smith Jr. Jigga would again be released. In 2007, Jigga would be arrested for crushing Mandel Duplessis and would again be released. It is rumored that Jigga wasn't alone on the Switch of Slim hit. His partner in crime would be Stephen S.K. Kennedy. They would allegedly both be trigger man on the hit. Stephen S.K. Kennedy would be deleted in Houston, Texas as retaliation for going with the move on Soldier Slim. All right. What happened? So as he's telling me the story, a guy named Steve from out the 7th War reached, coming in while he reached for the door and man shot him in the head. Rumors would circulate online that Jigga was solely responsible for Slim. There would be multiple YouTube videos chronicling the story that either told half truth got the story entirely wrong or that didn't know about SK's involvement. In New Orleans, there are steppers from every hood, uptown, downtown, West Bank, and the East. Darrell Jigga Smith would ultimately end up meeting his faith. Jigga will be found crushed in the 3500 block of Hamburg, the very same hood that he will wreak havoc in. November 26, 2003, Slim will be slain in front of his mother's home. It is alleged that Jigga and SK out of Bernard were responsible for shooting him four times, three in the face and once in the chest on the front lawn of Ms. Linda's crib in Gentilly. December 31st, 2003, Jigga will be arrested in connection with Slim murder. The NOPD will find a stolen police issue pistol on Jigga with the serial number scratched off. Ballistics would match bullets from the gun to the ones used to Slim. SK Alto Bernard will meet his fate before Jigga. It is alleged that Jerome Hampton, a.k.a. Man Man, would crush AK in the parking lot of a Studio Plus motel located in Houston, Texas, right after Hurricane Katrina. This in retaliation for Slim's murder. Before his passing, James Tapp, a.k.a. Soldier Slim, and Christopher Dorsey, a.k.a. B. Jizzle, just dropped the hottest mixtapes in the street of the N.O. It was on and popping. It's rumored that Slim had several major deals on the table and was about to take the industry by storm, with him being the first artist to drop and Lil Real One being the second. Family is continuing to celebrate their loved one this Thanksgiving, nearly two decades after his death. On November 26, 2003, James Tapp, also known as Soldier Slim, was shot right here in New Orleans. In a story you'll see only on WDSU, 
Our Shea O'Connor talked to his family about his legacy. It's two times that I hate, and that's his birthday and this time of the year. I do good all the, re all the rest of the days, but this is kind of hard to deal with. I'm screaming, hollering, let it go. I'm going to a thing, you might see me in the metro. 17 years later, and the mom and sister of James Tapp, also known as Soldier Slim, say it still feels like yesterday when they found out the well-known rapper had been shot in Gentilly. Now for them, Thanksgiving has become a time to remember the legacy he leaves behind. It seemed like every year it just gets better. People, more people learn about him, more people know about him. And to really be kin to somebody who carries on a legacy and it just gets bigger each year, it's a blessing. They usually spend the day celebrating the life of the New Orleans rapper with family and friends. This year, amid the COVID-19 pandemic, Thanksgiving is different. We have a big family and we can't go be with them like we used to be in with them. So yeah, that make it more tougher for us, especially for me. Soja Slim, a rapper known for his gritty street smart lyrics is still considered one of the founders of what is New Orleans rap. In 2003, months after Slim, with police arrested Jarrell Smith, a man believed to have been responsible for Slim's death. He was later released and never charged. Sometime later, Smith was also Linda Tab Porter, Slim's mom, says while no one has been charged with her son, she has found peace over the years. Even though I miss my son, I've been blessed. So I think justice has been done. It just life and we got to move on. In the meantime, the mother and daughter say knowing how much of an impact Slim has had on the city of New Orleans, even after his death, makes every Thanksgiving worth celebrating. That's the best part, seeing the fans and their memories online and them sharing how they really feel about him. And it's like I said, I mean, all these years later, like you said, 17, I mean, and they still love him. To this day, Soldier Slim's death is still a cold case. No one has been arrested, charged, or convicted for that killing.